right, thank you. <laughs> All right, today I'm going to talk about my favorite animal, which is the bee. Um, I'm going to divide it into four sections, and I'm going to talk a little bit just about how bumblebees are such effective pollinators. I'm going to discuss CCD, which is colony collapse disorder, and other threats to the wild bumblebee. I'm going to go then into solutions, ways that each person in this room can help. And then I'll just give some interesting honey and bumblebee facts. All right. So, I hope I don't want to. All right. So, it is the genus Bombus, and it's in the family Apidae. They are large, fuzzy, and carrot pollen in their pollen baskets on their hind legs. They feed on pollen for protein and nectar for the high calorie intake. They are the best foragers of all the bees. There are about 20,000 different types of bees, but bumblebees can forage in rain, cold, and cloudy conditions. They're actually best built for that because they're so fuzzy that they can't survive in warm, sunny environments. That's why they are not found in the southern hemisphere. And they have an internal clock and solar compass so they can communicate with the other bees in their colony to tell exactly where they have been in relation to the colony due to the sun and due to their internal clock they can say how long it was so they know exactly what plants they have reached and bees communicate through dancing and it's called the waggle dance and they go, as you can see in the diagram, they just move in the direction of the food source through loops, and that can tell the rest of their colony exactly where they have been and where they know that there's a good food source. Okay. They have a symbiotic in interactions relationship with plants called mutualism. The bumblebees eat pollen for protein and nectar for their calorie intake, as I previously stated, and they cross-pollinate other plants they take pollen from. The stamen is the male reproductive part of the plants, and that is where the bees collect pollen. And then, because the pollen is in their little pollen buckets, and it's also on the fuzzy parts of their body, it is then transferred to the stigma, which is the female reproductive part of the plant. And so, it is the most effective pollinator known to our world. All right. There has recently been an issue with the disappearance of bees. In the winter of 2006 and 2007, more than a quarter of the USA's bees were lost to colony collapse disorder. And that accounts for upwards of $12 billion in damage for the agricultural department. Thirty percent of our crops are directly pollinated by only bees, wild bees. Um, there's also a large sector for managed bees, but I will talk about that later. Now, the reason that I want to talk to you today about bees is because pollination is the only way that we get plant and animal food. Essentially, hand pollination is not feasible. In China, the Sichuan province is trying to start hand pollination, they have somewhat, but a human can only pollinate in the 10 to hundreds range of plants per day, whereas bees naturally pollinate thousands of plants per day. It's just not feasible on a massive scale. There are other threats to wild bumblebees. Um, people can't directly pinpoint the cause of CCD. Some people have thought that it might be a fungus in the honey. Uh, some people think that it may be the fact of stress, which is number five on here. But the threats to wild bumblebees are, first and foremost, habitat loss. There's a lack of flowers to feed on and a lack of nesting sites due to so much development. Two, pesticide use. Any pesticide, insecticide, herbicide, they're all poisonous to bees, and because of that, it is mutating them and they cannot effectively use their solar compass or communicate with the other bees. There's also an introduction of disease from managed bees. Managed bees are the bees that are in man-made environments and the government controls where and how they pollinate. 
climate change and the stress. There's a lot of stress because people think that you should be able to get any crop at any time of the year, like everyone loves almonds. So beekeepers and managed bees are shipped cross country, over seas, to California to pollinate almond plants. And because of that, they're put under an incredible amount of stress, which represses their immune system, and then they're more susceptible to pathogens. So essentially, this is also saying that local and natural pollination is the best form. In class, there was an apocalypse day, and we talked about ideas of the world ending, but I would propose for you all to think of a life without bees, because I think that could be one of the most apocalyptic outcomes that we might ever see. Uh, Lord Rooker of the House of Lords in UK proposed that if things were to keep going at the rate they are, bees would be extinct in 10 years. I read an article that said it's more likely to be eight years. If there's no pollination, there's no plants. It's a really simple equation. We just don't have the manpower to hand pollinate. So imagine a life with little to no plant food, which would result in little to no animal food. It would kill biodiversity on our planet. And I think that that would want to be probably the worst impact we could possibly have. So it's definitely time that in addition to thinking about global warming, in addition to worrying about meteors hitting the earth, it's a far more reasonable argument to be worrying about the safety of our bees. There are ways that we can all help bumblebees survive. Never use insecticide, herbicide, any of the stuff that you can get in garden stores to kill weeds. Avoid it. There are natural methods for getting rid of weeds, for getting rid of certain insects without having poison all over your yard. Um, plant heirloom variety of plants. They have more fragrance, more pollen, and more nectar. Bees can sense smell which is why the more fragrant plants are best for them. They know where to feed. Uh, and of course, more pollen and nectar. That's more food for them. Plant colorful flowering plants. Bees are incredible because they can actually see patterns in nature. So if you have colorful plants, they can see that, sense it, go right to it. If you have grass, hay, or old logs, leave it. It's great nesting material for bees. And of course, going organic goes along with no insecticide, no herbicide, just be completely all natural. It's the best thing for bees. All right. I have some pretty neat facts about bees. If you guys aren't interested at all yet. Uh, according to our current mathematical equations, bees can't fly. They defy our conception of what gravity is. They are one of the sole exceptions. So there's a nice quote that aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know it, so it goes on flying anyway. Nice little inspirational quote for y'all. Um, honey is a great antibacterial. If you're somebody that doesn't like taking medicine or antibiotics, the pH of honey is 3.5 to 4, slightly acidic, and it inhibits bacterial growth. It also has high osmotic pressure, so bacteria comes into contact with it, undergoes plasmolysis, resulting in the loss of its moisture, and then eventually the bacteria's death. And if you have every day a teaspoon of honey, it will help prevent you getting sick. And then lastly, honey for allergies. Um, I use honey as an allergy medication. Anyone who suffers from allergies can eat a teaspoon of honey every day, and because you're eating the pollen that's local to you. Uh, you will get immunities to it, and you won't have allergies anymore. So if anybody is interested in this further, there's a great PBS documentary called The Disappearing of Bees, and I highly recommend that everyone watch it. Um, but it's about an hour and a half long. So showing a clip of it would be futile in class, because I think you need to see the whole thing. But that's all I have. Thank you very much. <laughs>